spoiler. No! Kirby! Hey man, watch it! Seriously? He begins to say. Hey guys, welcome back to the Freshman. Hello there. Um, before we begin, as usual, I would appreciate if you guys would give it a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. This is the next part of the Freshman work that has been cut out and now been made its own separate episode. If you guys are not aware what happened in the last episode, we pretty much started things off with Abby. Uh, we were hanging out with Abby. Abby told us some sort of naughty things she did whatsoever wow. um, with Tyler. <laughs> But we had a girl to girl talk pretty much and then we transitioned to Chris as he shows us a presentation alongside with Arjun and Zig where he wants to now help people with criminal records to give them a second chance to go to college whatsoever. Um, Zig was pissed at first but we convinced him to you know go and help us out because you know Chris wants to help him and wants to help many more people like him with criminal records whatsoever to have a second chance and be able to be successful um you know and not having to work on sh on crappy jobs or whatever um and then after that uh caitlin and abby talked but it ended up being more of a fight and <gasps> now the two girls still kind of hate each other so yeah this is gonna be uglier than we thought but i'm just seeing yeah That'll be it for us, and yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's get to it already. Chapter 11, Rock and Roll Heartfelt. By the way, camera. You sit in your dorm room waiting for James to Skype you from LA. What's taking so long? He was supposed to call 20 minutes ago. Yikes. You sight and open up the document window with Vasquez's book again, and fingers hover over the keyboard. Okay, let's see. She was trapped, caught in between two friends who... Suddenly, the video call window pops up on your screen and your computer starts ringing. Finally! Yeah! You click on the answer call button and James' face appears in the window. Hey, Kirby. You don't know how good it is to see your face. Don't tell me you missed me already. It's only been a few days. I started missing you up the minute I stepped on the plane. It looks like they set you up in a pretty nice spot. This is only temporary, until I can find a place. Jasmine's been helping me out with the hunt, which is great. I feel like I haven't left my computer in days. Yikes. Sounds like you could use a little distraction. How's the lake treating you so far? Honestly, I'm feeling really great, really good about it. I miss Hartford, but that's so to be expected, of course. I don't know, I feel like this was where I'm supposed to be. I only wish that you would hang with me. Me too. So what about you? How's the gang? Everything's falling to pieces. Well, that certainly doesn't sound good. No. It's really not. Things have been pretty difficult around here lately. Do you want to tell me what's going on? You let out of sight and shrug your shoulders. The gutter kittens have their first headline gig tonight. Oh yeah, I saw that online. Give Caitlyn my congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, that kind of thing. She and Abby got into a massive fight last night. Uh-huh. And they left things a terrible place. Abby's refusing to go to the show and Kim is just... You trail up as you look down at the computer screen and James is focused intently on his keyboard. Uh, James? Uh-huh. James! He glances up at the screen and when he realizes you're glaring at him, he gives you a sheepishly smile. Sorry, it's just these deadlines. I swear I was listening. If you're too busy to talk... No, no. I'm just so close to finishing this video. I've been stuck on this one part for the last hour or so. I thought you, 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 you did just a rewrite. This is my third one so far. I'm sure it won't be the last. Yikes. Wow, sounds like they're changing quite a bit. James shrugs. His smile seems strained. You just your typical bitch to screen changes. It's important to make sure it's relatable to a general audience. Well, hey, maybe I can help you out. And then you can, you know, pay attention to me. That would be great. Actually, maybe a second opinion is just what I needed. So what's the issue? 
Generally speaking, the execs are pretty confident that the play will translate well to the big screen. I made a few high-level changes of it, but they have a problem with the ending. With both of the endings? He nods his brow for a... The original ending is, and quote, too harrowing for an American audience, and the new ending is sappy and unrealistic. Hmm, that's a tough position to be in. How do they want you to fix it? They insist that for audiences to care, there needs to be an action sequence. An action sequence? They actually read the script, didn't they? James shrugs forlornly. Hmm, I know it's not your forte, but it shouldn't be too hard to change. Just add... Uh, carriage chase. I mean, there must be a reason every action movie has one of those scenes, right? That, that could work, actually. One of the wagons could be the wedding carriage. Perfect. James bends over his keyboard and begins typing furiously. He waits until the clacking of the key silences. Yep, that looks good. Thanks, Kirby. That was quite a conundrum for me. Anything I can do to help. Now, focus, please. I could really use some advice on what to do about this whole Caitlyn Abbey thing. Of course. Okay, run it by me one more time. Bruh. He sight and stare at the ceiling, filling in him again from the beginning. And it's not just Abby. Kaylee's out all the time, and when she is here, it's like she's a whole different person. She's supposed to be my best friend, but lately it's like I don't even recognize her. That's all of it. I guess I've just been feeling really stuck lately. What do you think I should do? There's no response. When you glance back at the screen, James is staring at his keyword again. Seriously? He begins to say something, but there's no sound. Then his microphone clicks on. I'm so sorry, it's just you gave me such a great idea for the new ending. I had to strike while the inspiration was there. It's not so much that you're working as it is that you muted your microphone so that I wouldn't hear you working? Wow. I, I didn't want to interrupt your story. Kirby, I love you and I want to hear about everything that's going on. Wait, it's just this deadline. You know what, James? I get it. I do, but next time we talk, I want your complete undivided attention. I know, I know, I'm so, so, so... Don't, don't apologize, just make it happen. Now go work on your script. Thanks for being so understanding. Let's talk tomorrow, okay? You have to tell me everything about the concert. Sure. James hangs up and you shut your computer slowly. You start, startled by a knock on your door. Come in! Tyler pokes his head tentatively around the corner. Did I hear James? I was going to ask you to say hi for me. I don't want to say much of anything to him right now. Yikes. Oh, that's... Hmm. Do you want to talk about it? Don't worry about it, Tyler. I'm hanging out with Chris today, so I'll get it off my chest then. Okay, great. Abby says my advice can be a bit clinical sometimes. I'm sure Chris is way better at this. Speaking of hit off, is he still in his room? Uh, no. Actually, he left a while ago. You clench your jaw and frown. Don't shoot the messenger. He left with all his students' cancel stuff, if, ta if that helps. I'm not going to take it out on you. Don't worry. I'm going to... Take it out on Chris? I swear, when I find him, I'm going to go... Uh, oh, hell, a fury. I'm not on him. I'm sure it was some sort of emergency. There has to be a good excuse as to why. I'm sick of all these excuses. You grab your bag and stomp out of the room, slamming the door to the suit on your way out. Yikes. Yes, you approach the student's council meeting room. You hear loud voices coming from inside. You step quietly into the room. He's trying to turn the school into a mockery. I've said so since his first campaign speech. We're trying to improve this school by opening its doors to people who actually want to learn. Think about the number of people who want to go to school but can't because of a mistake they made a long time ago. Oh, here we go again with that old sob story. We get it. You were a troubled child and you made something of yourself by throwing a ball around the field. Like I said before, this isn't about me. We're proposing is a very different from a sports scholarship. This is about creating opportunities for people who are cast aside otherwise. What would it be in the school's best interest would be cutting all of the scholarship. Sebastian, even you have to admit that's the same. There's no way Dean Stanford would allow it. It's actually quite reasonable. This school hands out scholarships like candy at the petitioner's office. Wow. In fact, a countermeasure or to Chris's proposal, I propose we cut all scholarships that aren't based around academic merit. The school would save millions and we'd trim the fat, so to speak. 
Gentlemen, please, let's keep things professional, shall we? You both make such wonderful points, but clearly we're not getting anywhere today. That's a great, great convey in a few days, hmm? Yikes. The committee starts to gather their things and head for the door. Arjun gives Chris a commiserating pat on the back before heading out. He walks towards Chris, but Professor Tia pulls him aside. Listen, Christopher, we all know that Sebastian's well. He's quite a character. Yeah, you don't say! But I do think your idea has real merit. Thank you! Really? So we can go through with it? Unfortunately, it's too much larger for monetary allocation for my approval alone, especially without the treasurer's go ahead. Yikes. Chris's face is fall and Professor Tia pats him on the shoulder. However, the Dean has put has final say in matter like this. Put together a compelling presentation and I'll see about setting up a meeting with Dean Stafford. Thank you, Professor. We won't regret it, I promise. Professor Tia smiles at him and nods to you as she walks away. Kirby, did you hear that? This could actually work. Wait, what are you doing here? Bruh. Me? I came to support you. It seems like Sebastian is making things too difficult as usual. <laughs> Normally it would make me miserable, but if the Dean can bypass his veto, Chris trails off and stares to be guiltily. Crap, we had plans, didn't we? Oh man, Kirby, I'm so sorry. I forgot a tear call earlier this morning. This was the only time she had all week to hear the proposal. I can see that. Sebastian is really a pain. Don't worry, I get it. You don't think Sebastian was seriously, do you? About cutting all scholarships? Honestly, who knows with that guy. He's probably started to just piss me off, but at least with Professor Tia's support, I have another shot. Now I just got to nail this presentation. I'm sure you will. Why don't we talk about it over coffee since we're supposed to hang out today? Chris goes to collect his papers from the podium. I really love to, but with this new wrench in the machine, I need to get to work right away. Are you sure? I don't mind helping. Chris smiles at you, stacking his papers and tucking them under his arm. I want to say yes, but I'm trying really hard to buckle down this quarter and get some stuff done. Not saying that you're not in or anything, I just, I really can't have any destructions right now. That's, that's probably good idea, I guess. You're really serious about this? Chris begins to head for the door and you follow after him. Well, we'll have plenty of time to hang out at the gutter cannons here tonight, right? Of course, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Chris gives you a wave before hurrying down the hall. I'll see you tonight. You watch him walk away and then slowly head back to your suit. Yikes. When you arrive, you see Zack sitting on the couch. He's hunched over his homework but looks up and grins when you walk in. Oh, a good distraction. He shoves his book away and rests his chin on his hand. I swear I've been rereading the same sentence for an hour. Sit, sit, sit. Instead of walking on the couch, you pull out a seat at the table and plop it down and Zack joins on the, you in front. Okay, what's wrong? You mean besides everything? Still a sip about Abby's and Caitlyn showdown last night? Yeah. Well, yeah, how could you not be? They're friends and they're fighting over something stupid. Don't get over it. Yeah, I hope you're right. I guess I've just been feeling... Useless. James was ignoring me when we video chat earlier, and Chris totally blew me up for student council stuff. I guess I'm just so used to feeling needed, and I don't like how things have changed. You rest your head on the table and Zach pats you on the shoulder sympathetically. Well, I need you. I've been feeling the same way since Brandon left, but you've been my anchor in my storm. Ah, oh, Zach, you're the best. Zach reaches over and gives you a one-arm hug. I know, and hey, you know what would cheer you up? Getting in a munch pit tonight and letting out all that frustration, huh? He groaned. Ugh, don't remind me. Do I have to go? Uh, duh. Come on, it'll be great. You have to support Caitlyn and you finally get to hang out with Chris. But most importantly, you need a break from beating yourself up. You know what? You're right. I can spend all night all- I can't spend all my time wallowing. That's the spirit. Plus, you might be able to get a chance to fix some problems. What do you mean? Well, once Caitlyn's all high on the state energy, it'll be maybe it, it might be easier to get her to make up with Aunt Abby. And we'll have another opportunity to make a good impression on Caitlyn's bandmates since last time didn't go so great. Yeah, and we get to have a lot of fun in the process. I'm loving that attitude. Okay, let's get you ready. Ready? What's wrong with what I'm wearing? Well, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just we want to show Caitlyn we can keep up with her new pals, right? What do you what, you think a change of clothes is going to help that? Bruh. It might, and even if it doesn't, you might as well dress the part for a punk show. What about you? Aren't you gonna get dressed at all? Me? Please, I swore off letter after the plan pleater pants inside incident of senior year. Okay, I definitely have to remember to ask about it. I'm just going to wear this to the show. Don't you think it'll be a problem? Zack eyes your outfit and shots. Huh, you may not exactly stand out, but you still look good. 
and that's good enough for me. In that case, should we head off? We might have time to catch Kayla before the gutter kittens go on. As she's ready to leave, Abby comes out of her room and stands in the hallway with her arms folded. So, you two are still going to the show then? Abby, I know you're still upset, but this is a big deal for Caitlyn. Can't you just let it go? Why should I? Caitlyn obviously doesn't care. Abby! Of course she does. I know she's just as upset as you are. Yeah, did she tell you that? Well, no, not exactly, but I'm her best friend, I can tell. I think after last night, you both needed some time to cool off. Maybe after the show tonight, she'll be in the mood to talk. Abby sighs and bites her lips. Well, come on, if you don't, if you won't do it to make amends with Kayla, do it for us. All right, all right, don't say I never do anything for you. Do grab your things and leave us to heading for the concert venue in North Bridge. When you arrive, you see Tyler waiting outside the venue by himself. Oh, good, you guys are finally here. Dean got out early, and I was starting to worry I had to go in there by myself. Abby walks over and wraps her arms around Tyler's waist. He kisses the top of her head. You're here. I thought you were too mad to come. Oh, I'm still pissed, but Zack and Kirby convinced me to come out anyway. Maybe tonight's the night Caitlyn and I make up. Couldn't let our girl sit home alone for me. Is Chris with you? I texted him a while ago, and he said he'd meet us out front. I saw him at the library earlier. It looked like he might be there a while. Yikes. I'll see where he is. You step away and pull your phone now. Hello? Chris, wh why are you whispering? I'm at the library, you know how Miss Beach feels about herself, so I can't talk long. I hope not. The cutter came is going for like 40 minutes. You better start making your move way over. There's a moment of silence from the other end. Unless you're not coming, are you? Hey. I really wanted to, but I just made this major breakthrough on the president for a scholarship pitch. I have to stay here and read through these papers. I'm really sorry, Kirby. I know I said I'd be there. Yeah, well... I guess another time. I'll just let this one slide. Again. I appreciate it, Kirby. I just can't lose my momentum right now. How about we hang out sometime next week? Yeah, I guess if you decide you have the time. Kirby, don't be like that. This is really important to me and for the school. I can't waste some time waste some time on some dumb concert. Wow. Dumb? You know what? I don't mean it like that. Yeah, well, you said it like that. Kirby. Have fun with your proposal, Chris. Your dumb friends will be here at the dumb concert having a great time without you. Kirby, I'm sorry. Sorry? Sorry isn't good enough. Stop apologizing and do better. Oh! I will. I can't wait for this proposal to be done. Tell Caitlin I say break a leg. Sure. You hang up and head back over to your friends. Should we wait for Chris? How long did he say he'd be? He's not coming. Should we head in? Without face waiting for a reply, you head into the venue. You see Caitlin and her band laughing near the back and walk over. Hey guys, I'm so happy you hit the headline slot. I can't wait to hear the new songs you've been working on. Uh, thanks Kirby. Hope you don't mind us stealing Caitlyn away so much recently. Hey, don't worry about it. As long as Caitlyn's happy. Oh, she is. She's become such an important member of the band. Natasha throws her arms around Caitlyn, ruffling her hair, and Caitlyn giggles. Tyler, Zack, and Abby catch up to you. Hey guys, break a leg out there. Thanks, Zack. Ah, you guys are the best. You don't know how much it means to me you came. She hugs Zack, then Tyler, she stops in front of Abby. I'm surprised she showed up. Yeah, well... Abby trails off and shrugs. Caitlin frowns and turns away quickly. Is Chris with you guys? Yeah, something came up. Come on, Kate. We're up soon. We should go to and whatever. Sure. After the show, we're totally celebrating. Of course. Welcome dead, guys. The band hits backstage, and you and your group head to the bar. You get your drinks. As soon as you turn to walk away, you see Zig standing nearby. Hello there. Hey, Zig. Fancy meeting you here. He startles when you call his name, but smiles when he sees you. Hey, Kirby, I say there's more, more of my scene than yours. That's actually a fair point. Get six if you a quick arm, one arm hug, trying not to spill the drink in the other hand. And I see the whole gang here, almost. 
The rest of your group walks up, drinks in hand. Zick shakes Tyler and Zack's hand, then gives Abby a small smile and a wave. You all looking forward to seeing your girl play? I'm actually kind of nervous. I hope it goes well for Caitlyn. For Caitlyn's sakes, if anything, she's been so excited about this and a huge deal for the band. Hey, if this, if this, if, hey, if the last show was any indication, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. As he says that, the current band hits their last notes and begins to clear the stage. The go to Ken should be up next. Your group heads to the edge of the crowd and a wall of people stand between you and the stage. How do we, how much, Joe, do you think it takes to get this hair to do that? She gestures at a guy in front of you who has a towering mohawk. Huh, we can't see anything from here. You catch a brief glimpse of the Gutterkins entering the stage, but there are too many people to clear, get a clear view. What's up, Northbridge? You and the rest of the crowd cheer loudly. Are you ready to get your head into the gutter? They drive in, they dive in right into their first song, and the crowd in front of you starts jostling as the mosh pits open. Alright, I'm going in. Who's with me? I'm game. I've got the frustration or two that I could use some beliefs. That's my girl. Anyone else? Abby and Tyler both look at each other and shake their heads and no. I'll go. I've never moshed, but it looks fun. You haven't? Six shrugs. I like the vibe here, but that doesn't mean I participate much. Alright, let's do this. Tyler, Abby, you're in drink duty. You, Zach, and Zig, um, hand over your drinks up to them and venture into the crowd in front of you. So how does this work? Just do as I do. Zack makes his way up into the mosh pit. He jumps up and down, flailing his arms and pushing the people around him. Shall we? After you. Yen Zack follows Zack's legs, laughing as he pushes and shoves the people around him. This is so fun! As soon as you say it, someone pushes you from behind and you fall into the dirty club floor. No! Kirby! Hey man, watch it! Zack steps forward and shoves the guy hard in the chest. He shoves Zack back and then Zack takes a swing at him. Zig! Don't! Another guy emerges from the crowd and throws a punch. You cover your head with your arms as the brawl breaks out around you. Uh, this isn't fun anymore! No. Abby, I'll save you! Tyler dives into the crowd. You peer up in just long enough to see Tyler trying to pull Abby off some guy who was just swung at fist at Zack. Not my friend, you bastard! Oh crap, this is not good. As chaos ensues at the show, will you and your friends make it out alive or be tossed in the gutter? Find out in the next chapter of The Freshman. Yikes. Well then, that was something. Anyways, as much as I would like to continue this episode, I'm going to end it here. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, drop me that like button. It definitely helps out a lot. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, I would appreciate it if you do. Also, leave your comments and your thoughts on this video or anything in general. And that'll be it for me. I love you all. I appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.